Hello, it is Thursday, March 24th, 2022. I'm Chris Remode. Welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is, of course, a Thursday puzzle, so some kind of intricate theme perhaps awaits us. Um, but this episode of the Daily Solve, this edition is brought to you by Joseph Schwalbach, Joe Percy, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you so much to the three of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. I very much appreciate their generous support. And if you'd like to join their ranks, you can do so at patreon.com slash daily solve. And if you do that at the benefactor level, uh, you can get access to this recognition, of course, as well as the Let's Check the Crosses Daily Solve official mug. Um, but if you back the Patreon campaign at any level, you also get all of the uh, bonus solves that have gone up on the Patreon channel to date, as well as the extra channel in the Daily Solve Discord chat server, which uh, the rest of which is free for anybody to join. So uh, links to all of these things in the description field underneath the video. And thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level. You can on Saturday, you'll be able to join my enjoy my most recent solve of the Boss Words Spring Themeless League competition. Um, I did not acquit myself very well last night. Uh, I, t- I took this, I solved solved the puzzle last night, and I, I solved it cor- correctly. But uh, my time was not great. I got really hung up towards the end with some very tricky misdirections. So, if you do subscribe to the Patreon cam- campaign and you enjoy watching me struggle with crosswords more than I do in these Daily New York Times one uh, ones, you will certainly get that on Saturday morning when that goes up. Um. Okay, so that's it, I suppose. Let's get on to today's crossword. This is, of course, a Thursday puzzle constructed by Jess Schulma, who I believe is a debut constructor. I had quite a few of those recently. But anyway, let's get started. We'll hit this play button and go. Big position for an MBA. Could be CEO or another chief officer of some sort. Operating officer, finance officer. Credit card issue. Um, fraud, maybe? That could be then chief financial officer for the MBA, but I'm going to want to check the crosses on that. Language that gave, a, gave us pajamas. That's interesting. Urdu, maybe? I'm just guessing on the crosses there. I think I've seen this before, but I don't remember what it is. Malediction could be a curse. Oh, maybe it is Urdu. Poet who's full of praise. An odist. So look at that. We're finding a way to get odes into the crossword without even using the word ode. We're using the uh, derived odist, someone who writes odes. Um, the New York Times cross, perhaps Will Shorts himself is an odist. Perhaps that's why he's so preoccupied with odes. Okay, so this, this does look like a redo. And home of some NCAA wildcats. Not sure. I mean, that, that'll be a college sports team in the U.S., but the U is the, <laughs> is the part that's already been given to us, so I'm not sure. Sustainable water receptacles. Um, rain somethings, catch rainwater, presumably. And place to order sake and sashimi. Interesting. I mean, this looks like sushi, but it doesn't look like the whole word, the whole answer. So maybe... I wonder if that's something theme-related. This is going to continue elsewhere. I'm not going to fill that in yet until I have a better idea of what might be going on. I could be wrong. I mean, maybe, maybe this, maybe there is a word for this that ends with a single letter that I'm not familiar with, but we'll have to look. Email folder. Um, sent is an email folder. California's Big Sur, region of Cal, beautiful region of California. Blend before use, or blend before use, I suppose it could be. Use seems more likely. Um grammatically right here. Um, I don't know, pre-mix or something maybe? Oh, yes, yes, because email folder could be spam. So that is pre-mix. Lion of Narnia. Not sure. I think I sort of read part of one of those books when I was young and I've not seen any of the films or anything. Uh, Blank Minor, Ursa Minor, a um, constellation. And Overseas Post. Is that mail? I mean, post is what you'd call the mail in the UK, but is that what that's, that's getting at? Is that the overseas? And what is this again? Um, maybe that's not what this means. Overseas post. What does that mean? It seems like it is about mail because I assume the question mark, which is the pun or wordplay indicator, I'm guessing what the crossword constructor is assuming is that 
our surface read of this will refer to a job overseas, a diplomatic post or something like that. Um, and so the question mark then turns it into something else, something relating to maybe the male, but I'm not sure. Where values may be taught and where the tibia is, your shin, right? Um, one with the grounds to serve you. Interesting. So if this were barista, and the reason I'm suspecting something's going on here is because this is crossing, this looks like one with the grounds to serve you in a punny way with a question mark makes me think of a barista. And that crosses this sushi thing that didn't look like it had sufficient room. So, oh no, I actually don't have an escape key on this keyboard, so I can't easily activate the rebus. I'll have to use the mouse. That's fine. So, sushari, sushi, hmm. I don't really know what that adds up to. A sushi ga or something like that? Is that... Uh, hmm. Maybe, maybe I'm on the wrong track entirely. But now let's keep going. Mr. Roboto band. Oh, is that sticks maybe? And like oxygen therapy chambers, hydrated? I'm not sure. Sound check sound. And here we have subway stop abbreviation. So it could be a station on a subway system, for instance. Um, ba, 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 what else? Revered figure or revered figure. Um, I don't know, an idol or a god, deity. None of these fit, obviously. Um, let's keep going through the puzzle. Blank buddy. <clears throat> Not sure. MC's warm up. And sports star turned model, Gabrielle. I don't know that either. Attention getter. I don't know. It could be something like psst, but it could equally be something else. Band, or, you know, it could be something like look. I mean, it could be any number of things. And it could also be something that isn't an exclamation. So, uh, like, it could be a wave, for instance. It could be so many things. Banned from trade or commerce. Embargoed or sanctioned. Um, I'm, I'm, I really think there might be a rebus in here somewhere. If you're if you're due to that concept, almost every time there's a rebus in the crossword, there's at least one person in the comments, and this is entirely understandable, who says, "I had no idea you could put more than one letter in a cell in a crossword, but you can." Um, like I showed you before, uh, but this, that sort of thing usually only happens in the New York Times crossword on Thursday, which is when the more ambitious themes pop up. Okay, strip of computer shortcuts. A menu, perhaps? I'm not sure what that... Uh, Brita competitor. So Brita is a uh, a water filter brand. Half of an old movie duo. It could be Hardy from Laurel and Hardy. Just guessing based on the number of letters, but it probably could be any number of thing, other things as well. Um, no, I don't, I don't think it is. Blank Choi looks like Bok Choi, the vegetable to me. And... Uh, part of a royal flush. Is it an ace or what is a royal flush? Oh, is that 10 and then no. Is that the four face cards and an ace of the same suit maybe? I can't remember exactly. Sorry, I'm not <laughs> much of a card player as you can tell. Um, what else do we have here? 100 cent unit. Could be a euro. I mean, a dollar would be more likely in an American crossword, but I, you'd have to use a slang term to refer to it, whereas you don't need to with the euro, so maybe that's it. Uh, acetaminophen for one. I'm not sure. Even could be tied in a game. Bullberry. Ah, another another classic crossword word. A bit of crossword ease. The acai berry. Um, Certainly referenced more in crosswords than I ever encountered in my life, but that's probably not true for everybody. Uh, have a little lamb. Eat, I suppose, question mark, indicating a bit of pun or a wordplay. So in this case, have refers to, to eating something. I'll have some. Oh, a revered figure is an icon. There we go. And sa sound check sound, maybe tap tap on the microphone. I'm not going to do that now because it would be very unpleasant to your ears. Um, this does look like barista. Okay, so there's, I, I'm very confident there's a rebus in this puzzle, but I haven't yet identified how it works because I didn't. it didn't lead to these two answers seeming compatible with one another when I put it in. 
but let's keep going. Get off could be disembark. Ah, so here we'll have another another rebus. I'm guessing high-minded sort, high-minded sort of a pothead or something, pot smoker maybe. No, that doesn't work with disembark. Hi again. There's a question mark, so some kind of pun or wordplay. So high-minded in this case, I think meaning high in in the colloquial sense. But what is that? Um. Here we have Elvis Presley's middle name, which I believe was Aaron with a single A. Oxygen therapy chambers. So this could be hyper something that then uses another rebus. Um, this really does look like disembark, but I don't know how many letters are going to be any in any given cell. Uh, half of an old movie duo. Okay, who who else would there be? Um. I'm not sure. Sorry. Um, uh, sorry, I'm still thinking about this old movie do a thing. Uh, I'm sure it'll be. I'm sure it will be incredibly obvious once I actually see it. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. Word with dog or elephant. Uh, I'm not sure about that either. Um, part of a royal flush. Maybe it's a ten. Maybe it's a maybe it's a ten and oh there aren't four face cards why did I say that so maybe it's ten jack queen king ace that would make sense right I guess I was con I was conflating ace with the face cards and count and double counting the ace so that's obviously wrong um okay but ten ten looks correct so I still don't see what that is strip of computer shortcuts. Not sure. Anyway, let's keep going. New York City's Blank Delano Roosevelt Park. Oh, so obviously a relative of Franklin Delano Roosevelt, but I'm not sure offhand. Where you might find very little liquor. And Marvel Mischief Maker. This probably is referring to the Marvel films, I assume. East Coast and West Coast Educational Initials. Uh, there are probably a number. So I don't know. It could be something like, oh, maybe something with UC, University of California at somewhere, but that also maps to, I don't know, University of Connecticut or something. I'm not, I'm not sure offhand. Uh, like many endangered species, fastest of three famous ships. So this is probably referring to the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, which were part of Columbus's expedition to the Americas. Um, well, the only one of those, I suppose, that's that fits here is the Pinta. So, uh, it'd be great if, there we go. I wonder how common the names of these ships is to school children outside of the United States. I would assume not very common. Uh, that feels very much like a thing that is particularly taught in the US. Uh, shabby establishment could be a dive, as in a dive bar. Stone Cold Blank Austin. I do at least recognize this name. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Surely heard of that person. And Stroke or the Object of Strokes. Uh, a pet. <laughs> you could pet an animal or you could stroke your pet. Not Cool could be... Sorry, I just keep getting messages and I was double checking anything. Important isn't happening. Uh, not Cool could be unhip. Oh, here's our revealer to our theme. Heighten expectations, say, or a hint to entering four answers in this puzzle. Interesting. Uh, club with a with dinner and a show. And here we have, oh, East Coast and West Coast Educational, right? So US, USC, maybe? Uh, that could be University of Southern California and University of South Carolina. Okay, so that works. Um, club with dinner and a show. A cabaret. So, all right, there we go. So that um, we can put in bar. Oh, raise the bar. Heighten expectations. Oh, oh, is it simply bar? Oh, sushi bar. That's four letters, though. Oh, the bar would also be here. Oh, oh. Wow, interesting. I see. Okay. 
So did I fill this out correctly? I think so. I suppose what's happening is we put bar here, and then we put the I here. So now we have barista and sushi bar, but the bar is raised. What a strange, <laughs> what a strange thing. So does this work then? Sustainable water receptacles, rain barrels. Okay, there we go. Wow, that's so strange. So that doesn't really apply. Oh, and uh, yes, I see. So a shabby establishment is a dive bar. And it didn't even occur to me that that was an incomplete answer because I, I think in casual speech, you could refer to, refer to a place as a bar. You wouldn't necessarily need to say, sorry, as a dive. You wouldn't necessarily need to say a dive bar. You could say that place is a dive. But of course, a dive bar would be the full term for that sort of place. Wow. Okay. So that was, that was an interesting one down there in that it didn't clue me into the fact that anything was going wrong or not wrong, but that anything was amiss, I suppose. Um, so right here we have baristas, sushi bar, rain barrels. Wow. That is a, that's a tricky one. I must say this looks like Aslan, Lion of Narnia. It sort of rings a bell. Could be an O. It doesn't look as right to me. Where values may be taught. Oh, math class, maybe. Va numerical values, perhaps. And then overseas post. Ah, it was neither of the things I thought. It was neither an overseas job posting, nor was it post as in mail. It's rather a mast, a post on a ship when you are literally on the seas. Okay, non-kosher entree. Ham something, perhaps? Uh, ham roast, maybe? Attention getter. Banned from trade or commerce. Oh, so maybe we could spell embargoed here with our um, rebus, but in fact, because of the raising the bar, we're going to have to put it up here. So that gives us some more context around attention getter. And then, oh, maybe not. No. Okay, I'm confused now. Maybe I don't understand how this works. Um... It must go here. Embargoed. It just doesn't make sense otherwise. So maybe this, it must be that this clue then. Strip of, yes, okay. So this must be the bar, the one underneath. That's right, of course, because it needs to work for all. It needs to work for both the answer that it crosses and also the one underneath. So embargoed gets the rebus. And then strip of computer shortcuts is a something bar. A what? And then here we have traditional canoe material. Something bark. Um... Birch bark. How about that? Does that sound right? I think so. And so strip, task, task bar. Okay. There we go. Task bar, strip of computer shortcuts. That looks correct. Um, word with dog or elephant. Not sure about that. Okay. So I'm wondering if this oxygen therapy chambers includes something bar hyper... And then what about, oh, right, we had disembark. Yes, we can fill that in. We can fill that in immediately. So let's do so. Disembark. There we go. And then this this is going to end with bar, whatever this is, where you might find very little liquor. A beer bar, maybe. How about that? A beer bar could be also a dive bar. Uh, so high-minded sort. Pot, oh, maybe it's not a beer bar. Um... Wow, there's some serious motorcycle action going on outside right now. Um, I don't know how much that's coming through the mic. Probably probably is coming through. Uh, this or that could be either. Um, official pardon. And complaint. Could be a gripe. You could have, have a gripe, a complaint. Uh, seasonal drink could be eggnog. Acetaminophen for one. Oh, a drug. Okay. I was I was trying to make that more complicated and think of what in particular the um what sort of drug it might be, because it lo it certainly looks like the name of the drug, but um, I guess I didn't need to. Oh right. I think I maybe browsed through this e earlier but got distracted because of the movie duo. Peru would be Ma Machu Picchu locale. And what is this one? I haven't seen this. Organization for paid drivers. So organization abbreviated, so the answer will be abbreviated as well. And this must be the PGA, the Professional Golf Association. Um, drivers, in this case, meaning uh, golf drives. I saw the uh, Mark Rylance, recent Mark Rylance film, The Phantom of the Open, about a, 
elderly British man in the starting in the 70s, I think, who repeatedly entered the British Open despite having never played a round of golf in his life before his first British Open. And uh, it was a very good and ridiculous story. And Mark Rylance is great, generally. Anyway, British competitor, a uh, pure, perhaps, that looks like it might be a brand name for a water purifier. So does that help? Secretly unseal in a way. A sneak open, maybe? Secretly unseal. Not sure. Attention getter. Oh, I see. A hem. There we go. You might say a hem. A hem. <clears throat> that sort of thing. Secretly unseal in a way. Okay, so steam open, right? You could steam open a letter to, uh, to, um, you know, dissolve or remove the adhesive without tearing anything. And what a pirouette is performed on one leg. So a, a, a ballet dancer may pirouette on, a, on one leg. Oh, and bosom buddy is a common phrase. So there we go. MC's warm up could be an intro, introduct, introduce the acts. And Tolkien monsters, orcs looks right to me. And Homer's local watering hole the bar in The Simpsons is Moe's, so I do know that. I don't always know The Simpsons references, but this one I do. And sports star turned model Gabrielle must be Gabrielle Reese. I'm not actually familiar with that name, I don't think, but it's certainly a plausible name. Okay, what else? Where can we look? Um, I, was, I wonder if there's anything we haven't seen. Oh, Marvel Mischief Maker. Ending with his I, I bet this is Loki. And non-kosher Andre Hamsteak, I suppose? I think we're, this puzzle's coming together. That's nice. Um, oh, half of an old movie duo. I see. This is a bit of misdirection. This would be Ebert, as in Roger Ebert and uh, Gene Siskel, his um, longtime movie reviewing partner. That must be the case. So a word with dog or elephant is ear. Ah, yes, dog ear or elephant ear. Yes, both used as phrases to refer to, to things beyond their anatomical reference. And then... Hyperbard, like oxygen therapy chambers. Um, oh, hyperbaric, hyperbaric, sorry, hyperbaric chamber. There we go. And so then what is here? Where you might find very little liquor. Tiki bar? You certainly wouldn't find little liquor at a tiki bar. You'd find quite a bit. I'm actually in San Francisco at the moment. I haven't been here in years, although it's where I spent, in total, a majority of years of my life, I suppose. Um, and there's a really the, one of the world's absolute great tiki bars called Smuggler's Cove here. And I used to live about two blocks away from Smuggler's Cove. So I was a frequent patron of it. And I'm going to be sure to visit before I go home. Anyway, uh, is that what the answer would be? I don't think so. Official pardon. Why do I not see what the official pardon is? And pot. Oh, a mini bar. A mini bar. And so maybe this is pot smoker after all. Why did I think it wasn't? I must have had an incorrect cross somewhere. Oh, amnesty is official pardon. Sorry. Again, I'm not sure why I didn't see that. Uh, so what is this? Like many endangered species. I'm not sure. What about this? Lead or lead. Oh, a leash, maybe. You could have a, a dog on a lead on a leash. And the jig is up is a common phrase, so there's that. And goodness me. And the good fairies in Sleeping Beauty, e.g. a trio, perhaps. So this is saying, this is an example of the thing, e.g., rather than this defines the thing. So the good fairies in Sleeping Beauty are an example of a trio. Goodness me, oh my, perhaps. About 40% of table salt sodium, I guess, makes sense. So let's check this cross as well. New York City's uh, Sarah, Sarah Delano Roosevelt Park. I, I didn't either know or maybe maybe have encountered, but haven't didn't remember this. I'm not sure. Um, person with intelligence is a spy, in this case referring to um, covert intelligence. And goodness me is oh my, after all. So what is this? Like many endangered species, I see. They could be officially protected to try and prevent their extinction. Attention getter. A prod, maybe? Towel cloth? No, no. Because a towel cloth would be a, t a terry cloth. Um, and provoke with up could be rile up. Some nasty weather could be sleet. Oh, and then, oh, here, I didn't think I've seen this one yet. Many bongra dancers. This looks like six. I was co corrected recently that it's not pronounced seek, but rather sick. Um, and then attention getter is pst. Okay. Oh, right. And that was one of the uh, potential things. I, 
one of the potential answers that occurred to me for the 26 across attention getter, which ended up not being that. But here it is with 52 across. And there it is. Whoa. Wow. That was much louder than I expected it to be. Sorry. Uh, just turned down that volume a bit so that doesn't happen again tomorrow. I don't know. How, maybe it wasn't as loud coming through for you, but it was extremely loud coming out of my speakers. Okay. Uh, so there we have it. Let's admire your possible. What a funny, what a funny bit of language there. So we had to heighten expect. So I actually, I guess, closed out the theme in this case a little ways before finishing the puzzle more broadly. So our, our revealer here, and this revealer, which is the um, central answer that ties together the the thematic, well, both the thematic content and also potentially, especially on a Thursday, the mechanic that is used to complete the puzzle related to the theme. And the revealer explains it and ties it all together. And it's in its most canonical location, which would be um, in the across clues in the southeastern corner of the grid. And it's in the most specifically common version of it, which is three cells from the southern border and terminating at the eastern border. So we have heightened expectations, say, or a hint to entering four answers in this puzzle, raise the bar. And so in addition to bar being a part of the acrosses and the downs with which it directly intersects, it also completes one, in each case, one clue beneath that cross. So here we have a sushi bar, a task bar, a mini bar, and a dive bar. And so there we have it. A good, a very clever uh, theme from Jess Shulman with a bit of uh, its secrets revealed itself um, in slightly more depth after a while. I, I assumed it was going to be a straightforward Rebus puzzle and then eventually realize. I mean, I think fairly early on, I thought it was going to be because of this sushi thing. I mean, when we had four of the five letters of this answer, it was very clearly it was going to be something sushi related because sake and sashimi would make sense in that context and the fill made it pretty unambiguous. But it didn't make sense that it would just be sushi. So I figured there needs to be some way to get other letters in the grid. But it could always be something like the letters take a turn. You know, you, you could imagine spelling sushi here and then B-A-R down from it. That sort of thing might happen on a Thursday puzzle from time to time as well. So I wasn't necessarily certain it was going to be a rebus, but it increasingly seemed likely. But what I wasn't expecting was the raising bit of it, which I think, I think th because I, I missed it entirely after the, um, after the revealer, because I did, as I said about dive, it didn't occur to me that dive needed to be more than just the word dive in order to be complete dive bar. And so I think it was over here. Uh, well, I don't remember. It was either embargoed or disembarked where the, where I think that made more sense to me. I think I tried to put it in. Yeah. Anyway, I don't remember, but, um, but it was a very interesting puzzle with a very clever, a very clever gimmick. And I think a relatively reasonable rest of the fill. In fact, I'd actually, there may have been fewer proper noun crosses than there have been in some of the ostensibly earlier puzzles this week. So that was interesting. And actually, you know, I was just saying, I was just thinking I'm going to move on to some clues from yesterday's puzzle, but there may actually not have been any corrections. Let me just quickly double check that to make sure. So I don't want to give anyone short shrift. Let's just double check. Oh, actually, yes. James Draper explains regarding a metonym, which I, and I, I, I realized, I think as I it was coming out of my mouth, I realized I wasn't being specific enough, but I didn't, but I just sort of let it pass. So James Draper explains regarding the, the term metonym, uh, I did some research and came to a minor revelation. A metonym is a technique where an item or concept is referred to by something related to it. This can be a geographical location, like Hollywood is shorthand for the American film industry, but can also be a more abstract metaphor, like saying the grave to mean death. The revelatory part was that I always thought that's what a synecdoche was, but it turns out a synecdoche is when you refer to part of something as its entirety. If someone demands all hands on deck, they'd probably expect the rest of the bodies to follow, not just the hands, or vice versa. England beat France in the cup final doesn't mean the entire populations of both countries were on the pitch. It can also use, I think... I think England and France in this case could be either one of them, really, because, well, yeah, no, I see what you mean, because the, the, because 
Because in this case, the thing you're referring to is a subset of England rather than England being a part of the larger thing. So fair enough. Anyway, um, it can also mean using a brand name to refer to all products of a particular type. Kleenex meaning any tissue or Hoover meaning any vacuum cleaner. Um, I felt very smug when I've dropped that into conversations over the years, but it turns out I've been using it wrong the whole time. So very good point about from James Draper, Draper about metonym versus synecdoche. And I think the thing that I got wrong yesterday was that I referred to a metonym as being location specific, but it isn't necessarily, as James point out, points out. And uh, Gemini Mish points out that a mule is a type of shoe in this case uh, when we were dealing with um, mule and clog in yesterday's puzzle. And, um, oh, and several people commented on my my blindingly white visage in yesterday's video. I um, Yes, before I started recording today's video, I realized I probably should block out. Uh, there were, I was getting a lot of natural light in this hotel room, so I realized I should probably block some of that out and, and record in a bit more of a, a dark and uh, troll-like environment in order to keep my face from getting completely blown out. Uh, by that situation, by overexposure. So I did that today, and I think it looks a little better. Um, and that's it. That's it for today's puzzle, I think. So I'll be back tomorrow for the Friday puzzle. We will dispense with this thematic nonsense and get on to solving a, an ordinary, difficult crossword. So do join me for that. Please do subscribe to the channel as well if you've not done so. And if you think you know somebody who might enjoy this puzzle or this series about puzzles, pass it along to them as well. Uh, thank you to everybody who's done so, and thank you to everybody who has subscribed. It was nice uh, the other day crossing that 5,000 subscriber barrier. So thanks for everyone to everyone who helped for that with that. Uh, just <laughs> jumbled a bunch of words there. Anyway, I'll be back tomorrow for the Friday puzzle. I hope you join me, but until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care.